Okay, so now we have other definitions for acids and bases. You guys have already learned that um, if something starts with hydrogen ions, it's an acid. If it ends with hydroxide, it's a base. This is very limited um, in its use, though, because things have to have things have to have hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions in order for this to work. So um, I can't get there. We go. So the other definition that we're looking at is something known as Bronsted-Lowry definition. And in this case, the acids are proton donors and the bases are proton acceptors. And by protons, we're talking about hydrogen ions. So here we have a little example where we have our drawings for these things sketched. And I can look and I can see that I start with this HNO3. Well, that's an acid. According to our definition, an acid is a proton donor. So here's a hydrogen ion. What does he do? He gets rid of it. He donates it to this guy. So there's our hydrogen ion right there with a plus charge now. And this gets a, um, well, I shouldn't have written it there. It gets a plus charge over here. And this original acid now gets a minus charge. But we see that this acid donates this base accepts a hydrogen ion. So that's our definition. Let's go ahead. I'll come back to that one. Now, if I come here, I want to, um, to this part that you guys have on your notes, we have conjugate pairs. Let's change that a little bit. Let's change it to conjugate acid base pairs. It might describe it that way, or it might just describe it as being conjugate pairs. So knowing that we're always talking about that pair being one acid and one base. And conjugate acid-base pairs are just going to differ by one hydrogen ion. So now if I go back to that previous slide, remember they're going to differ by one hydrogen ion. So in this example here, I can look and I can see that I've got something like this, HCO3 with a minus one charge. That is one hydrogen different than this guy right over here, CO3 with a minus two charge. So because they differ by one hydrogen ion, that makes them a conjugate pair, a conjugate acid-base pair. And we can see, if you go through this process, you can see that this um, substance right here, your acid, donates a hydrogen ion. In other words, over here, it has one less hydrogen ion. So because this guy donates a hydrogen ion, that classifies it as an acid, and this one, um, the other side, is a base. The opposite is true here, where we have H2O and H3O with a plus one charge. They differ by one hydrogen ion. Therefore, they are conjugate acid-base pairs. One of them is a base and one's an acid. So let's do some examples on how we figure out which one's which. Okay, our first reaction, we have NH3 plus H2O, and that yields NH4 plus with an OH minus. NH3 is, an, is a conjugate. Who, who's the conjugate of NH3? Okay, NH4 plus. So these guys are conjugate pairs, and these guys are conjugate pairs. You should be able to look at that and see that they differ by one hydrogen ion. So now if we want to think about which one is gaining hydrogen ions and which one's losing hydrogen ions? You start off by looking at your NH3, and NH3 goes to NH4 plus 1. So what did the NH3 do? It gained. It accepted a hydrogen ion. So therefore, NH3 is a proton acceptor making it a base if it accepts a proton. Let's just double check and make sure that the opposite is true for H2O, but it should be because you should always have one acid and one base on each side. But we see H2O goes to OH minus. What did H2O do? It donated, it lost a proton, so therefore that makes it an acid. Another thing that makes this easy, once you really get one of them, you should have them all figured out. Because if NH3 is a base, then its conjugate is going to be an acid. If H2O is an acid, its conjugate is going to be a base. And just the typical um, rules, what we do is we put a C in front of those things on the right-hand side, meaning conjugate, conjugate acid and conjugate base. 
So if I worked in the opposite direction, we would see that the conjugate base accepts, the conjugate acid donates, etc. So you could work it in that direction. You know, another way to do this is maybe there's something there that catches your eye and screams something to you. So for example, I look at this, OH minus. What does that scream? Base. Base. So we know that's got to be a base. If this is a base, this would have this is a base, this would have to be an acid. And if this is a base, its conjugate would have to be an acid, etc. So you can go through and work it that way. Okay, let's do re reaction number two. Anything scream out to you? Hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid. So we know that's going to be an acid. Let's double check. Acids should donate protons. So by donating a proton, it becomes Cl minus. Yep, these are conjugate pairs. This is the acid. This is its conjugate base. H2O should, um, should accept. So it starts off as H2O. Now it becomes H3O plus 1. So this is a base. This is its conjugate acid. Okay. Couple things we can notice here. First thing, if I look at my water in these examples, I see some differences. In one case, it's acting like an acid. In another case, it's acting like a base. So that, there's a special term for that, and that term is amphoteric. And the example we're going to mention here is water. But amphoteric is just um, a substance that can act as an acid or a base. OK, and then the other thing I want to mention is this guy right here. We haven't really talked about that before this point, but there's a name for that that you should know, and that name is the hydronium ion. So you need to know that name. And if you look at it, it's really nothing all that special. All it is is a water that has a hydrogen ion attached to it. So a water with a hydrogen ion attached to it. These things are really the same things. It's just like a hydrogen ion. This happens to be attached to neutral water. Um, the way that maybe we can think about that, it's like some people that you know. Let's, let's name this guy Robert, and here, call it Bob. Well, you know what? Rob, Bob and Robert, they're the same guy. It's just that you can give them different names. So these two things are exactly the same. We're just calling them by different names. This is just a longer way of saying it. This is a shorter way of saying it or writing. But it's exactly the same. OK, and then I'm going to come back to that on another day. Here's something I want to mention real quickly about um, acids that have more than one hydrogen ion. And you should be able to kind of read through that and see that that's what it means. If it's polyprotic, then that means more than one proton, so more than one hydrogen ion. So if I look at something like that, I see I've got two hydrogen ions. I think it's important for you to know that each one of those takes uh, is one step. So we lose one hydrogen ion and form HSO4 with a minus one. Well, then you start with HSO. HSO4 with a minus one and lose another hydrogen ion. So that's just a stepwise dissociation is what that's showing. And then we have an example that I want you guys to write down. This is not on your notes, but um, you should be able to do this. If it says to write the conjugate acid for HSO4 with a minus one. So if we're going to write the conjugate acid, that implies that HSO4 minus one is a base. So that's the key to this, is understanding that that's, that's a base right there. Well, what do bases do? They receive. They accept hydrogen ions. So let's make it receive a hydrogen ion. How would you write it with that? H2 SO4. So notice the charge. It was minus one. It accepted a plus one charge, so now it's neutral. And then if we do the opposite, here we're going to write the conjugate base for HSO4. Well, if we're writing the conjugate base, that implies that HSO4 minus 1 is an acid. 
So acids donate, we're going to subtract a, a hydrogen ion. So if you get rid of a hydrogen ion, what does it become? Minus two. Excellent. So that's important for you guys to be able to do as well.